All right, everyone, here's one of the best movies ever, and here's why I think you should watch it coming up next. What I just called one of the best movies ever is A Brighter Summer Day by Edward Yang, Taiwanese director. This is a 1991 movie that for about 20 years was lost or not known at least in the United States and other parts of the world until its rediscovery. Now it's on Criterion Collection, so you can just go watch it that way. This video is for the people who haven't seen the movie, but those of you who have seen it can profit from this. I'm gonna say, analyze it in the way I usually do with my impromptu speaking here, but Really, here's what I want you to do. Just go watch the movie. Don't even listen to anything. Don't read any plot summaries. I think this movie is better going into, or probably would be better going into it blindly, not knowing anything about it. That's how I experienced it. and I was absolutely rocked by this movie and everything about it. So just don't pay attention to anything. Although the rest of this video will not give spoilers, but it will set you up to watch this movie profitably. There's one more thing I have to say about watching this movie. You will look at the runtime. It's four hours long. I was always scared off by this movie because of the runtime. Finally, I found some time to sit down and watch the whole thing all the way through and it's worth it. There's nothing extra in this movie. It's all necessary. It is legitimately a four hour movie where it builds up to a conclusion where things recur that you have to remember from an hour or two or three hours ago in the movie. And so what I would do is either watch this all at once, like you would, one of those extended editions of Lord of the Rings, one of those Lord of the Rings movies, or, you know, watch it in pieces, watch it two hours here and two hours the next day. That I would definitely experience it that way. Breaking it up would be fine. Now, the movie is about youth culture and particularly boys, boys growing up in Taiwan in 1960. If you know nothing about that, well, you don't need to because one, you've probably already seen a few Hollywood-like movies or other kinds of movies like The 400 Blows where you see a boy's tale, a boy growing up, the struggles of boys, even just youth. You can say boys and girls in a particular culture, in a particular place. Those are familiar, and this movie is riffing on every single one of those that came before it. Second of all, the movie gives you enough cultural and historical context to get by on just knowing that most of the adults depicted in the movie are mainland Chinese who escaped or fled from the Communist Revolution in 1949. They go to Taiwan, they settle there, but they're always longing for mainland or homeland China. They're always hounded by their past trying to settle in this new environment, which is Taiwan. And then the movie tells us that the youth of this time, and you know, the, the kids, and you'll see in the movie between 12, 16, 18 years old, are unsettled and they need an identity or ways to form identity. So they join up with street gangs or youth gangs, which is what the movie is mainly about. Kids in youth gangs or kids who are in families and schools and these gangs, and those gangs help give them, as gangs have tended to do, security and some stability and meaning and identity. Now, if you read descriptions, the movie is gonna say it's about this young kid named Sir, who is about 14 years old, roughly. He's in school, he's in family, and he's in a youth gang, as I said. These are three different spheres in his life, which he, interacts differently with and the questions in this movie are like what forms him and what shapes him the most what makes him become what he becomes later in the movie you have these three wildly different environments they're all competing for power and interaction in his life and while it's true this is definitely a boy's tale most of this movie is centering featuring on boys sir and his circle of friends and other kinds of boys i think this movie is about Ming, the young girl as well, who Sir you know, wants to fall in love with. She becomes his girlfriend, as it were. She's always there, even if you don't notice her from the very beginning. And then her life is told to you in a way. She shows up, you know, about an hour into the movie, maybe, and then you see her throughout. So it's about a young boy in Taiwan, a young girl in Taiwan, circa 1960. And the differences between males and females. Unfortunately, females are treated pretty pretty awfully, in my opinion. You know, they're, they're considered almost the property of these youth gangs. If one of these members of the gangs has a boyfriend of the girl, and then the girl is seen with another kid somewhere else or a member of another gang, then they'll have a gang fight. And so these girls are kind of property and there's a turf war over them. And Ming knows that. And then she's also, uh, you know, well, I won't say anything more, but you know, it, she has a very interesting character. To me, 
perhaps the most interesting character, even though pretty much every character in this movie is great. So if this is a boy's tale, by the way, this is about Sir trying to learn bravery and from his own father who's escaped in you know, China, mainland China and is now trying to figure out his life in Taiwan. And this, there's some motifs in this movie, including Sir and the father coming home from school. The father's had a meeting at school about Sir and his performance there. While Sir is a very smart kid, He's failing or screwing up in a number of ways. Kind of a typical thing that happens in a boy's tale, right? Well, these little three times or four times it happens in the movie where Sir and his father go home and they talk. And these 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 little vignettes develop over the course of the movie. You have to remember each one of them. Another recurring motif is that, and you'll see this, the movie is about power dynamics and what shapes individuals in this particular society. You'll see gangs or crowds of people or even smaller groups like four or five people, usually boys, hounding another boy. So it's the powerful versus the weak, the masses or the group versus the individual. And this is a recurring theme throughout the entire movie. And the question about is Sir going to join a gang or not? And whether he's going to become, in terms of the youth culture, you know, a big jerk and a violent kind of kid. In the beginning of the movie, near the beginning, we see one of the kids who becomes sort of a main character hits another boy with a brick across the face. And Sir is a witness to this. It's sort of a gang initiation for him in a way. The movie's so great and sort of peeling back the layers of power here because once you, you think you're at the pinnacle of power and you see this one kid or street gang member who is the most powerful, then the movie will move backwards and then show you another level of power where a, a more authoritative individual comes in, whether that's another gang member, an adult, and becomes the powerful one. And then the, these layers of power, they're so rich and thick in this movie. Of course, it takes four hours that you get to the adult world. And by the end of the movie, you're having secret police, the Taiwanese national government, and then that I, what I would call the dominant beast behind it all in a way, and for good or for ill, right? I don't think the movie is, is on one sided here. American culture, which is throughout the movie, Taiwan 1960s, the movie claims deeply affected by this. Elvis Presley in particular, American music in particular, shown throughout the movie. You know, the, the power, and oh, and by the way, movies in John Wayne, Westerns, definitely Sir and his other compatriots are affected by Westerns, maybe shaped by them, maybe shaped negatively by them. So you have American power behind it all. Of course, then the, the Chinese homeland behind it all, too. So there's a Taiwan literally in the middle between China and the United States. We feel those tensions, but really this is not a political movie. All that's in the backdrop, a sort of character study of about 10, 15 different characters, particularly Sir and Ming. I love that this movie depicts very young people, it uses actors who are very young. In fact, they're realistically aged I think 11, 12, 13, up to 16, 18 years old. The movie even makes reference to this, that a lot of these boys movies, gang movies that we've seen have actors who are 25 playing 16 year olds. You know, that, that sort of thing where ho it's Hollywoodized and they're made to look tough and bigger than they actually are. But you look at this movie and the people participating in violence, gang initiation rituals, they look so young, it's super sad to watch. And to see Sir, who looks young himself, he looks like he's 14 years old to me, going through puberty and all the hormonal stuff there, having to struggle with who am I, what am I, and the gangs have this very strong appeal to him. The movie even makes strong reference to this when there's a movie studio across the street from the school that Sir and, and his friends go to, and Sir often kind of cuts class and goes and watches from the rafters and make these movies. At one point, there's a, a an older actress, 30, 40 years old, who is replaced, hopefully, they think the movie executives want to, by a teenager because they want a more realistic looking character. The character is supposed to be 16 or a teenager, and yet this 30, 40 year old actress is playing, and then they get rid of her and try to get one, actually, Ming herself, to become an actress in this movie. Well, she looks like she's 15 years old, you know? So this movie is striving for a sense of realism and historical context, I think, very, very seriously. However, this is an artistic expression du jour. This is like Edward Yang is one of the greatest directors ever just on the basis of this movie. His technique, his formalism, his choice of editing, his, his you know, juxtaposition of scenes, his shot making is fantastic. I can't tell you enough how fantastic it is. It's so fantastic. It reminds me of Orson Welles in this sense that every single frame of this movie could be watched and analyzed to death, I know most of you wouldn't want that, 
but there could be 10,000 words written about each single shot in this movie. That reminds me of what Citizen Kane is like. It's that rich. And so for that reason, plus I love the story, and plus this movie brings in and questions history and politics and power and all of those things, I think this is one of the best movies ever made, for sure. It could be watched 25 times and pr profitably. You, you'll never exhaust what this movie, is. you could say about this movie or what you could see in this movie. And that is greatness in my opinion. So yeah, I'm telling you, go watch a four hour Taiwanese movie about 1960 Taiwan, which most of you have no clue about or never heard of, but still this is a cross-cultural movie, universal in some ways, you will identify with. Again, if you've seen some boys tale sorts of movies where there are movies set in the ghetto, or in rural America or, or Europe or something like that, or a boy is struggling with growing up, this movie will be familiar to, enough to you, and yet it will embed you in Taiwanese culture enough to make it a rich living place. And oh, by the way, this movie references War and Peace a couple of times, the great Leo Tol Tolstoy book. I feel like this movie is a grand rich novel on that scale, at least in terms of human depth and complexity, not in terms of like vast vistas and historical events. But every single character in this movie matters so richly and deeply. You could watch this movie all the way through and focus on one character, major or minor, and that character will become alive and a friend or a rich person to you. This movie must have 20 interesting, fascinating characters in it. So for all those reasons, I can't recommend this movie strongly enough to you. Now, what do you think of A Brighter Summer Day? What do you think of what I said in the video and anything else you wanna add? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you, have a great day.